I'm back home. Shibby do. I'm home. Hello. Hello from Thailand. You can see the city in the reflection of the mirror. Now, let me switch this camera around and show you what I'm about to feast on. Got this from the grocery store, and there's still bees on them. And I'm a little nervous because I don't want to get stung. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to have to process. Ouch. <gasps> they stung me. Oh my god, ouch! Oh, you guys. I'm always crying about something on this channel, well, all my channels. <laughs> I swear, my life is so dramatic. Anyways, I'm gonna have to process these. Ouch! I'm gonna Google what to do for a bee sting. Oh my god, I got a bee farm over here. Um, I've never done this before. I've had honey, obviously. We've all had honey, but I've never had honey from the beehive. Is this a beehive? What's the difference? Oh my god, there's honey coming out. <sighs> Let's begin the eating show. Well, let me clean this up first. Bye-bye. Okie dokie. Let's just do this. <laughs> this is crazy to me. Oh my god. Let's just do it. Just honey. Oh. Mmm. What's that chewy part? I think that part's um, bee wax. <laughs> Am I supposed to eat that? <laughs> that was actually. <coughs> I'm not coughing because it's gross. I'm only coughing because <clears throat> some honey is dripping down my throat. <clears> throat. That is delicious. Okay. Let's go again. Here we go. I'm being very careful because there's like literally moving bees all over this. Oh. Oh. That is very good. Oh my god. I don't think I'm supposed to eat the wax. That is delicious. Oh my god. Okay, I put it down because like this is really awkward to be like. <laughs> so I need to make a recipe with this. I need to make something epic with this. What would go good? Well, I saw other people do fried chicken, but what would go good with this? Fried chicken? Lobster? No, something fried and crunchy because this is smooth and silky. Oh my god, look at the it's just oozing out. Oh my god. Uh, look at that. That's where I bit into. <gasps> look, I'm sharing with the bees. There's this really cool channel. Shout out to him. It's called Primal Primal Eating. He lives in the jungle. He's like in the he's in the water stabbing um uh, crocodiles. He's eating like wild caught things and he's like this skinny little thing running around. Sw he looks like George of the Jungle. I think he's from Vietnam, because I see the comment, a lot of the comments are in Vietnamese, I think. So, anyways, oh, well, I need to eat this with something. Let's take another bite. This was so good. I need another bite, but I don't want to get messy, so I'm going to just get another bag. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I am, <clears throat> so I put my hand in here, so I can grab it. I need to make something good with this. This was not cheap. Everyone says, oh, go to Asia, everything's cheap. It's like, well, first of all, to get hair is $3,000, $2,000, $1,000, depending on where you're coming from. And then you have to, you know, buy the honeycomb from the United States. Anyways. Hello, Mr. B. We're going to try this again. Are you ready?
That is intense. How did the bees do it? <clears throat> bye bye wax. I don't need to eat the wax. I get the honey, you know? Oh my god. Okay, so I need to um go out and get some fried chicken. Something fried and I'll be right back. I'm I know this was really short, I'm so sorry, but I wanna put this on something crunchy because I might get sick from this. So in the meantime, watch my muck, but my eating show whenever I decide to post after this. Don't worry, there's gonna be, I'm gonna redo this, get all the bees out, but I was too excited, you know? So I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, look at this. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Now, a lot of... Mm. Mm. A lot of you are wondering what I'm eating, right? Mm. Mm. It is my favorite food in the world. So I have top five favorite foods. Ramen noodles. Noodles, dumplings, durian, avocado. Number five, I actually forget already. I always forget number five. Here we have some napkins. So this is a fruit, like avocado. Did you know avocado is a fruit? Everyone thinks it's a vegetable, but it's actually a fruit. And um, it's one of my favorite foods in the world. Not only fruit, but food. It is sweet, like it is sweet. It is custard. It is has a, the, every durian is different. Sometimes it tastes like uh, vanilla. Mm. This one tastes like chocolate. Mmm. Oh my god. It's just the best thing in the world. I like the ones that are very oniony. They taste like onions. Mmm. It's very filling. This right here is probably 2,000 calories. Mm. But you know what? It's so good. With him. I feel like I'm at Disneyland. Da, 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 da. So every morning at 8 a.m. and every evening at like 4 or 5, they always play the national anthem of Thailand. You're supposed to stop what you're doing and honor the king by just <clears throat> sending out good thoughts. Mm. They play it all throughout the city. We have speakers. Speakers and parks. There's right in front of me um, a residential high rise area. That's the closest one. You can hear it all throughout Thailand. I'm honoring my king, the king of fruits, the durian. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. This one's good. This one's how I like it. A little onion. Mm. It's one of the most dehydrated th things, however, that I've ever put through my body. Very dehydrating. Worse than alcohol. Worse than... What really dehydrates me? Mm. 
Like a big juicy steak, but not even. Mm -mm. Alcohol yeah, it just me worse than that. Um It's like all your water gets sucked away. You have to drink like an extra liter or two just to go back to normal. These fruits, and it's interesting because when they're growing, they require a lot of water. That's why they only grow in Asia. They grow, oh look, there's the seed, where there's a monsoon. The roots of the trees take up all oh, this incredible amount of water. It needs more water than any other fruit out on this planet. Look at that little seed. Useless. Flat. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. mm -mm. So I'm putting this after my honey. I did my honey today. And I'm like, shoot, what am I gonna eat now? Mm -hmm. I'm getting full. It's like ice cream in a fruit. Mm. Very good for you though. It has potassium. I'm trying to not eat that many on this trip though. Lots of carbs. It's lots of sugar. It's very sweet. Not that I'm against sugar, but I feel better. Personally, my I was diagnosed with ADD as a kid. <clears throat> and Hold on, let me wash my hand. <laughs> Clearly I have ADD, I, I start talking, and then I come over here to wash my face. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Clearly I have ADD, oh yeah. Excuse me, when I, excuse me, in 2009, 2010, which was almost a decade ago, I went to college. Can you believe? That was crazy to me, anyways. I went to college and that's when I stopped taking my ADD medicine and I started playing around with diet. Maybe there's certain foods that trigger it to be worse than others. And um, ever since then I never took medicine again, which depends who you ask, depends on who you talk to. Yes, no, well, I, for me, I'd rather um, learn to really work through the symptoms and push hard because th those medicines have so much side effects. I think that's why my memory is crap because I was on them since a child. Like they really destroy your brain. <laughs> they have really bad, permanent, irreversible side effects to your brain, especially kids when the brain's developing. It, it, how, a psych, a psychological drugs are the worst of any kind of, me not drug, but medicine um, because it affects the brain. Your brain changes. So I started paying attention to see what foods really affect me. And um, I thought I had it all figured out back in 2010, 2011, 2012, blah, 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 blah. Then I went vegan, I went raw. Oh my gosh, yeah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, actually, no. Sugar really triggers it. Triggers my symptoms where I can't really focus well. And I thought it was just like, you know, eating meat. Because you guys know I was vegetarian for a long time. And no, meat is the best thing for my brain. I just feel sharp. I feel especially seafood, but all honestly, all meat. Now it depends how it's processed. If it's fried, no. Fried foods really send me over the edge. I become crazy. Like ramen? <laughs> no. Ramen's fried. But um if I'm just eating like chicken breast or steak or fish or literally anything. Uh I don't know about bacon. I don't eat bacon that often, but um anyways, I feel so focused. Very, 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 very 
very, very good. See, it's hard for me to make my words right now because of this durian. It's so sugary. And the things that actually worsen the symptoms would be fried food, high sugary fruits. Now, if I eat the low sugar fruits, like oranges, oranges are low in sugar compared to most fruits. It's low in the glycemic index. I find that my con for me, my concentration is way better. My ADD symptoms are barely there. I mean, they're still a little there, but not to the point where you'd be like, you have a problem, you have to go get your ass to a psychiatric place because you can't talk right, you know? Whereas if I eat something like durian or banana, excuse me, bananas, really high, high, high sugary stuff, oof, do not function well. Um, oh, fats also really help me, along with the meats, the fats. Um, Nikocado, avocado. I know people think I eat nothing but shit, which on my channels I pretty much do, because this is how I like to have fun on camera. But off camera, no one's going to watch me eat, you know, f fish and potatoes or something. No one's going to want to So I'm only bringing this up because I eat a lot of avocados. That's my favorite thing about Colombia. <sighs> There's always avocados. There's always, 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 always avocados. And it depends on which variety. The big green ones can add up, because they're usually $2 each. You can get them on sale for like a dollar each, which is not that far off from the States. Like I lived in Florida, um, they're about the same price, but Haas avocados, you can get up to three for a dollar, four for a dollar. Um, depends where you go and also the season, but I have avocados every single day. Every single day, I have avocados. I love avocados. I love fats, yeah. Um, Coconuts, fish, olive oil, macadamia nuts, walnuts. Ooh, you want you want to marry me? Buy me a big ass bowl of pistachios. Ah, I am all over you. <laughs> I love pistachios. Um, you can give me a can of sardines too. That really feels like a brain vitamin, but it's not that enjoyable to eat compared to like a salty pistachio. But I told my parents, cause my mom was like, it's so funny you're eating seafood, you know, because I grew up never eating seafood. They never served, well, they tried serving it to me when I was a child, but I always rejected, because I just didn't like the idea of eating nasty fish. I don't know, it grossed me out. So anyways, um, she's like, it's so funny, like, you like that? How, how do you like to eat seafood best? And I said, um, well, in Colombia, Colombia is not that big on seafood, even though we're pretty much near the ocean, it's like, we get a lot of canned sardines. We get a lot of canned oysters. And so I said, Mom, I just opened up a can of sardines and I eat the can of sardines and I feel great. And she's like, you, ew, eat them like that out of the can, oh my God. And that's honestly, doesn't make, make me like stimulated, like, mm, this is so good. But immediately afterwards, I feel sharp as a needle. I feel focused, my ADD, it's like gone. It's amazing, so I feel like Everyone needs to find a diet that really works for you. I thought by just going vegan, I would solve all my problems. And actually, my um, hypoglycemia, that's a whole different story, but my ADD was really bad as a raw foodist. And I was told by so many people like, going vegan is so healthy. Vegan is the health, the best way to live. And I'm just like, we need to stop drilling that into people's heads. That is not correct. That is not a blanket statement. Like, stop. Just because you read it on a blog spot or you see it in a YouTube video doesn't mean it's fact. And even if it is a fact for you, everyone's body is different in terms of what affects you, how you're mental, mentally affected, like how your body's working. Like I have hypoglycemia, I can't fix that. And eating a lot of sugar and a lot of carbs really, really messes it up. It makes it way worse. So people are always like, Nick, you're always talking about vegans and stuff. It's like, yeah, because I ha I was like brainwashed. I was, it was hammered into me for years. This is the best way to live. It'll solve all your health problems. And really, it made some of my health problems worse. Yeah, I may have been skinny, but that doesn't mean I was necessar necessarily healthy. And I'm slurring my speech from this damn dirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just because I might be at a low risk for um, obesity, because I'm eating just vegetables yeah okay but that doesn't mean everything else is also good there's always pros and cons you know i had a severe omega deficiency when i stopped being vegan the doctors gave me all these supplements they said start eating seafood i said i'd rather just eat the can of sardines and that's how i fell in love with seafood i was like wow i feel so much more stable 
So anyways, that's why I always talk about it. People get upset. Like, he's always bashing the vegan diet, the vegan... He's just mad because he couldn't do it. It's like, I'm mad because... I was misled. I was truly misled on the internet. I was truly, truly misled. And not by, not by pure malice, like, or malicious action. Some people just spread this information because they truly believe that it's correct, that it's factual, factually accurate. So they probably had good intentions, some of the people. But I'm just mad that, I was like, wow, like, because I, in return, I, I absorbed this information and then I spat it back. You guys, I used to have like a thousand videos on my channel and I deleted all of them because it's embarrassing. I look back, I'm like, I basically just regurgitated everything I was reading. You know, this is the cure for this mental problem. This is cure for obesity. If you have a heart attack, go vegan. If you have diabetes, go vegan. It's like, and now I look at that after everything I've, I've gone through and I see so many people that also stop the whole vegan thing and they're like, and I'm like, oh my God, I sound like a freaking robot where I'm just, spewing spewing rhetoric like this propaganda like a like a broken record go vegan go vegan go vegan go vegan and i'm like i'm like ah i have really matured since then i've really grown as a person and i'm never ever 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 gonna tell people how to eat and i'm never ever gonna judge people's diets either what they choose to eat i'm never gonna do that ever again that was the biggest takeaway I learned from, you know, that whole journey, which still seems like yesterday, but it's been two years since I stopped. And um, I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you that eating McDonald's for a mukbang is healthy, no. But I have learned what does and doesn't work for me. But this is also what I do for a living. I'm not gonna eat fish and salads and try to make a living off of that. I'm gonna do what I wanna do because this is how I support myself. And also, like Chris Crocker says, yeah, you got to eat healthy for your body, but you also got to eat good for the Holy Spirit. He lost, what, like 50 pounds? Do you know who I'm talking about? He lost 50 pounds. He used to be chubby, chubbier than me, I think. He was, he was like, well, it's not really do justice if you don't see my belly here. He was like, boom, out to here. He was like, bouncing around. And I still, I mean, I don't care what you what you weigh. I think it's really no one's concern. People act all concerned. Oh no, you're spreading a terrible influence. It's like, bitch, shut up. People will eat McDonald's regardless of the fact that you eat it in front of them or not. You know, if you eat chicken wings in front of a vegan who really doesn't want to eat chicken wings, it's not going to influence them to go buy the chicken wings. If you have someone that is, you know, lactose intolerant, they're not going to go have cheesy ramen just because they saw me eat. Like, they don't need me to eat what they think is healthy. You know, I get so pissed. Anyways, <laughs> he lost like 50 pounds and he said he was eating, what did he do? He just cut, cut back calories, ate more protein, and started work, uh, working out more. And he said he would have two cheat days a week. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. Part of being alive is not to eat salad every day of your life. Yeah, you might not get a heart, you might not get heart disease, though if it, the salads are low in fat, you still might get heart disease. But um, yeah, but you're also emotionally and mentally going to be sad, and you're not going to get the most out of life. So he said he would eat. Two cheat days for the Holy Spirit. He's like, I eat five days a week, I eat good for my body, and two days a week, I eat for the Holy Spirit to remind him, hey, life is still good. I can balance both because I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna sit here for my whole life and eat salads or whatever you think is healthy, be it you know paleo or gluten free or vegan, whatever. Excuse me, this is a whole ramble about diet diets. He says. This is my balance, and guess what? That's how it's sustainable, because a lot of people that do paleo, gluten-free, vegan, etc., they go so hardcore that even though they're telling themselves, oh, this is great, this is sustainable, they eventually crash and burn. Um, not all people, but a lot of people do, because it's like you food for humans, a separate from all other animals, is not just around to, to make your body move and give you energy. Food serves a huge purpose in our culture, world culture. Not just like your individual society, like what part of the world you come from. Everyone on this planet eats three times a day. That is literally 50% of your life is focused around food. When you take out the pleasure of eating, you go fucking crazy. 
Not all people, some people stick through, but it manifest, the crazy manifests in other ways, in my opinion. So, I just ate my durian for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh my God. Hmm. Well, this was an interesting ramble at the end of my honeycomb eating show, right? But yes. <sighs> yeah, so tomorrow is back on, oh. No, it's a part of my diet, lots of seafood. Thank you to everyone in the comments who told me about the octopus. So basically my problem was they already cooked this when I ordered it. I mean, when I picked it up from the seafood store. Hence why it's red and curled up already. They said I should just let thaw it completely and eat it and it'll be tender. Now I'm gonna do that because I've only had this once and when I did it, I put I cooked it for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes and the thing was so chewy, I couldn't rip it up. It was so chewy, so chewy, I really didn't like it. People said you overcooked it. And, and then other people said, no, you're undercooked it. You shouldn't do 10 minutes. I'm like, which one is it? You know, octopus is very good for like iodine and uh, B12, lots of uh, C vitamins and minerals they get from the sea, um, like the omega, the, the fats that lowers your bad cholesterol, raises your good cholesterol. So anyways, octopus is part of my diet now. <laughs> and um, so the next time I have it, I'm just gonna thaw it out and try to eat it that way. If that's still like so strange, I'm gonna put, cook it for like an hour and then I'll know. Then I'll know. Cause I feel like no one really knows. <laughs> Everyone thinks they know, but you know, like you only know so much of what I said. Like you didn't go to the store and look at it with me and. <sighs> Anyways, I'm gonna get going. Thank you so much for spending time with me. If you enjoyed my ramble, do hashtag Holy, Sp Holy Spirit. Cheers for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I wanna see how many people stayed. Probably five, two. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Holy Spirit. Do you eat for the Holy Spirit? Eat for your body, but boo, you got to make room for that Holy Spirit in that booty, okay? <laughs> Don't be miserable. I was talking to Orlin about this whole diet. You know, we were obsessed with diet. That's why I talk about it so much. Because it's hard to like break through like a, like a form of brainwashing. Because our, our extreme diets happened when we were kids. Like, Orlin was 13, okay? I was 16, 17. That's when I went extreme. When I was vegetarian, I went, that wasn't brainwashing. That was just because I didn't like meat at the time. Now I love it. <laughs> um, he said, Nick, if I had a choice of living until 70 and having two cheat, day, two cheat days a week like Chris Crocker and making room for that Holy Spirit, but you know, not going overboard where you're obese and can't, you know, get out of your house. Or if I had a choice of living until I was 85 and never having cheat days, but living an extra 15 years, which would you choose? Which would you choose? What is more important to you? Having an extra year? Having an extra decade? It doesn't matter how long you live, it matters how you live while you're alive. I think most people would say, what do you do when you're 85? Even if you're healthy, you're literally saggy. Your bones are deteriorating. Our, we're not supposed to live, like we aren't supposed to be living that long. <laughs> uh, if it weren't for medicine, we would all be dead. <laughs> you know, like we are not supposed to be living up until, you know, 80s, 90s, 100s. Like that's just no. Some people do, but um, our, biologically, we're, we're useless. After 40, 50, our bodies, there's no need to procre uh, procreate. Uh, our hormones are weird, like, we're, we're literally shutting down. You know, people get old, their, bo their bones become brittle and frail. They're at more risk for falling, like just falling down, like could kill someone when you're 60, 70, 80, 90. You know, just like falling down could kill someone if you're 90 years old, like that's, you're deteriorating, that's just how how our bodies work. So I don't, there's really no need for me to live when I'm 85. 
90 years old if I'm just gonna be sitting in a chair, <laughs> you know? So that's my message for today. Hashtag Holy Spirit, if you made it. And if you did, mwah. thanks for listening to my craziness. Thanks for not giving up on me. And I hope you enjoyed the entire video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Make sure you subscribe to both my YouTube channels. They're up there at the top because I'm going to see you again real soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.